Hi and welcome to the QCA3 Quick Start Guide. The installation is in the documentation. Once it's installed, apply it to your layer and under transform, you can choose the amount of aberration you want. You may notice that we now are working with transparency, which is really cool, as well as we also have auto buffer expansion. If we come down to the buffer expansion here, we can see it's set to auto. So auto is gonna, based on whatever transforms you've got, it's going to expand the buffer automatically for you and you can set an expansion limit. And that's just because scale is exponential. So you can get um, very large comps here and you can set a hard limit if you want. Note that if we come down here into the stylistic tab and we say, add some uniform distortion, that will not automatically calculate the expansion required because I was too lazy to do that. So you'll have to increase the auxiliary expansion there. Um, Distort Uniform is also unique in the fact that it applies it uniquely to all channels. That's the only time that this applies. However, if you would like to distort channels independently, that's where you use Distort Aberrate. So we could add some distortion per channel there. Uh, we also have Skew, X and Y, and then Blur, which we already had. A fun feature that we have now is we have samples. So currently we're just doing a single sample where if we go auto, it will based on the transforms that you're applying, um, calculate how many samples it should require to have a smooth result. So it might apply a lot more samples depending on how much transforms you have. And then, you know, if it's taking too long to render, you could lower the quality by um, lowering that, increasing the samples will increase the quality, but uh, it's going to take longer. So I'm just going to reset that. Another thing we can do is instead of just choosing the channels that we want to aberrate, we can actually shift the hue as well. So that gives you full 360 hue transform there. You don't have to use just primary channels. You can aberrate the entire rainbow. Let's check out the compositing section. So by default, repeat edge pixels will be on, but generally you don't really want it for text because you'll get an um, a result like this, but that's really handy to demonstrate the amount of expansion that's going on there. So yeah, it's not recommended for text. However, if you had it on an adjustment layer and just say we cranked up amount of aberration here and we did not have repeat edge pixels, you would see a giant fringe. That's really what it's for. Very handy for adjustment layers, not so handy for vectorized layers such as shape layers or text. Another thing we can do is preserve the original alpha. So if we look at the alpha channel, we can see that it remains unchanged despite having aberration here. And the reason for that, we had a user request this because they were wanting to apply chromatic aberration to lower thirds and they needed to render out the RGBA channels. So this allows them to maintain the original alpha while still achieving aberration in the RGB channels. Uh, we also have unmult in case you want to choose the alpha channel from the luminance. That's handy sometimes and that's the behavior that uh, QCA2 used to generate an alpha but now we're actually handling alpha correctly. So another feature we have is mix with original. So this is similar to the compositing controls that we have say effect opacity. Um, it's basically a master slider for the strength it works a little bit differently though, because it is a mix with original, but it's only mixing aberration. So for example, if we had uniform distortion, this here would be a slider for, do we want to get rid of the aberration only? It's not going to get rid of the uniform distortion. Whereas this one will completely between between the original and the final result. So, you know, if you wanted to tone down the amount of aberration, it doesn't really quite work because you've got such a huge disparity here. Whereas just say you like the effect, but you're like, oh, there's too much aberration. Well, then I can just set this to 50 and it will be less noticeable. The um, distortion parameters are pretty handy if you like using the CC lens tool, which I love using. It really gives the um, effect sense of perspective, even though all the layers are on the same Z space. Um, so that is a feature that I really enjoy using. If you have any questions or you get stuck, you can always come to the about tab here and you can click on this get support button. That will take you to our website and it will redirect you to the Notion site, which is kind of like a wiki page. Um, and it's got all the frequently asked questions and all the stuff that you may or may not want to know. I guess this is not really quick chromatic aberration anymore because we've added so many things. What started off as a very minimal plugin has now been very over-engineered, but I'm really excited about these new features and I hope you enjoy them as well. Yeah.